It's 2021. It's the World Series. It's starting Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Games 1 and 2 are in Houston. 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5. Atlanta. 6, 7. In the H. Back in the H. I am not going to make any predictions. Actually, don't hold me to that because this is going to be a little bit of a fun one today. I'm going into some of the numbers. I'm giving you the tail of the tape for your 2021 Major League Baseball World Championship Series. Houston was the number two seed in the American League Division. They ended up beating Boston, a wild card team in the American League Championship. Atlanta was the number three seed. They barely got in. They had to win their division because if they did not win their division, they were not they were not getting into the playoffs. They beat another wild card team, the Los Angeles Dodgers. How crazy is that? As far as records for this postseason, both Houston and Atlanta are 7-3, and three. but Atlanta has not lost in the A-Town. They are hot, 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 they are hot, in hot, hot, Atlanta. hot, the Bravos, let me tell you, one of the most chilling moments of this entire postseason for me was not when I realized the Yankee season was done. No, it was uh, somewhere in the middle of uh, the Braves Dodgers series when I mean it pivotal moment in the game and you just hear chop you just see the chop <laughs> like I was sitting in the chair and I looked over at my now sacrificed co-host and um, I was like I got people bumps I have people bumps all over and so yeah read into that what you will that Atlanta has the potential if they are able to take either games one or two Atlanta has the potential to raise that commissioner's trophy in game five but they have to take a game away from Houston in Houston in Minute Maid in order to make that happen. And then they also have to continue to defend the home field. They have no choice. Because if I know one thing. It's that hometown fans want to be there at the stadium. To watch their team win. Especially in this series. You know I mean. Am I over? Am I overselling this right now? Is this not the biggest series of the MLB season, this is it. I don't care what people have said. I have read all weekend that we are not getting the best two teams in Major League Baseball. What are these people talking about? What are they talking about? Atlanta just beat Los Angeles in six. The Los Angeles Dodgers with what? Not one, two, but like four MVPs. Uh, like a dozen Cy Young awards among the rotation, like just stupid stats, stupid good players on those teams. The playoff Dodgers came to play this postseason, even though I doubted them. And they came and they gave it their all. But you know what? Atlanta showed up and they showed up when they needed to. Houston blew the brakes. Off the Chicago White Sox. Yes, a young team, but a very talented team. And then they went on to defeat the hottest American League team in the postseason. With some of the hottest players on the field at the time. The Boston Red Sox and Boston, if they could have just kept those two games. If they could have just put a little bit more effort in those final two games. I, who knows what we're looking at. Boston, Atlanta. I wouldn't have watched that series. Other people, you know, 
they're talking about, oh, you know, MLB changed their mind. Everyone wanted a Boston Dodgers, but, you know, MLB, can't, we got to stop, you know. Stop that nonsense. Stop that nonsense, okay? If Major League Baseball was acting in a way that directly guided the outcomes of these games at the highest level where the most money is being put on these games, people would go to jail. That would be a criminal investigation. That's just what it is. You know, the two best teams this postseason are in the World Series. There, You can't get around that fact. In fact, let me lay some facts on you real quick because I got notes. Who's got notes? This guy's got notes. Let's see right here. Do you want to start off with batting statistics or pitching statistics? Batting statistics? Okay, perfect. Let's see how these teams match up real quick. Atlanta, this postseason, they've got a batting average of 250. Houston has a batting average of 281. Um, Atlanta has 83 hits, Houston 97. Atlanta has 39 RBIs, Houston has 65. But we all have to admit that Houston has not seen the same level of pitching that Atlanta has seen. Houston has been in with like four or five games where they've hit double-digit runs, and the Braves haven't been in a single one. Um, Houston is showing a lot more discipline at the plate through their hitters. Houston has 36 walks and 84 strikeouts. Atlanta has 31 walks and 101 strikeouts. Um, 101 strikeouts. In a single postseason, these guys are swinging, and they are swinging for defenses. It is unbelievable the amount of strikeouts that Atlanta has had this postseason. But here's 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 a stat that I want to throw in here, and uh, I think it's going to blow some people's minds about what's going on. There's a stat called BABIP, uh, the batted average on balls in play. It takes out of factoring home runs and like strikeouts and walks. So it is balls that are hit into the field of play. Currently, Atlanta's BABIP for the past 10 games this postseason stands at a 323, and Houston stands at a 335. Um, over a third of the balls that these teams are hitting is being put on play, and guys are getting on play on base. That's a great rate. But let me do you one better. Each one of these teams has a guy that is hitting 500 or better as far as BABIP is concerned. For the Atlanta Braves, it is someone who has been playing the best baseball of his life. Uh, he was a trade acquisition from the Cleveland Indians. Eddie Rosario, his BABIP currently sits at 500. On the other hand, is part of... I don't even know how to like not say he's not like a young core because this Houston team still has they're pretty much almost fully intact their entire playoff roster from like 17 and on. I mean, as far as their lineup is concerned, it is the same guys: Altuve, Bregman, Brantley, Maldonado, and then you got a guy by the name of your oh shit, what? Jordan Alvarez. His BABIP, hold on a second, I'm there, is a 591. So, realistically, five times out of ten, half the time, Eddie Rosario is up to bat, and he puts the ball into play. He's on base. Doesn't matter where he's hitting it, he is getting on base. Alvarez, on the other hand, Houston's DH, Jordan Alvarez. Almost six out of every ten times he hits a ball into play, he is getting on base. The 
there's going to be hitting. There's going to be a lot of hitting this series. I'm letting you know right now. Now, where we get into it as far as pitching goes, in my mind, it's fairly, the starting rotation is fairly even. Um, Houston just lost uh, McCullers uh, for the rest of of the postseason for this final series of the year. I don't know how much that hurts them. One thing that Atlanta has on Houston is that yes, Atlanta has had to implement bullpen games where they are starting they they're starting a bullpen guy for one or two innings, uh, hopefully getting someone go out there for three to four innings and then filling the rest out. They haven't had too many of those, but they have had them. Houston, on the other hand, has been in blowout games where they are both on the receiving and the giving end of those games. Houston's bullpen has been worked up and down, side to side. I want to see how they fare against this Atlanta lineup because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that Atlanta's batting average is, you know, ever so slightly smaller. What does matter is that. Atlanta has been less disciplined in the box. Again, some of that is to the uh, you have to account for the pitchers that they have seen this postseason. They saw an absolute three-headed monster in the starting rotation of the Milwaukee Brewers. And then you come and then you come back, you win that series, then you go on and who's your next series? Oh, it's no one big, it's just the Los Angeles Dodgers. They saw Max Scherzer I think three different times throughout that series. Um, uh, Urias, they they have seen the top of the line guys where Houston just hasn't seen that. Yes, Lucas Giolito, good pitcher. Yes, Nathan Avaldi has been was nails for most of this postseason. Yes, you saw Chris Sale, but this is Chris Sale coming off half a season. He was out for most of most of this season. Um, Houston just has not seen the pitching that Atlanta has seen, and Houston has not seen the type of quality pitchers that Atlanta has. Atlanta has true three, like three true starters going into this series, and they are starting this series off on the bump with Charlie Morton, who has been an absolute wizard his entire career in the postseason, whether it was with uh, Tampa Bay, whether it was with Houston, whether it was with Pittsburgh, and now it's going to be with Atlanta. Charlie Morton balls out in the postseason in the most pivotal moments. Count on him to own that mound when he is on there. Up next, after him, I would imagine it is going to be a guy, Max Freed, maybe? You know, no one big, just a, you know, future superstar ace in the game. Uh, getting his first taste of the highest level of play in all of baseball. Uh, after that, you're looking at, I don't know, Ian Anderson. Another guy who has just been lights out stupid this postseason. But let's start, you know what, enough enough about the Atlanta guys. Let me... um. Let me dive in. Hold on. Let me get my notes. I got notes. I even got little sticky notes on one of these pages. And that actually, I'll end with that because I truly think that the key to the game is going to be in the defense. With as well as these teams are matched up um, as far as at the box, on the bump, I think it's going to come down to defensive positioning. But I do want to give you a little bit of a rundown, tail the tape of the pitching matchup. This is not solely for the starters of the bullpen. It's the entire pitching staff. It's every single guy up and down, starters, relievers, all those guys. The team ERA for the Atlanta Braves currently sits at 3.41. Yeah. I had something I was going to say. Floated away. That earned run average for the team for the Atlanta Braves, again, is 3.41 for the Houston Astros. It is 4.5. Um, Atlanta, they have f- converted four out of the five save opportunities they have faced. Houston has only been in one save opportunity, but they did convert that. That is going to play a huge factor into this. Atlanta's bullpen has been absolutely lights out. Matzik. Minter, Smith, they have been extraordinary. That's three lefties, though. 
Houston's got some righties that can bop. We know this. They got righties that can bop, and they got lefties that can bop too. Um, let's see. Let's go. Atlanta. Their pitchers have 100 strikeouts. Houston, 93. Batting average allowed by Atlanta pitchers sits at 228. Houston, 245. Atlanta has two shutouts. Houston has one. Framer Valdez is going to be on the mound for the Houston Astros. What has he done this postseason, Jacob? Oh, let me tell you, Jacob. Framer Valdez has thrown for 15 innings. Uh, he's got an ERA of 4.20, 420. <laughs> dude, 420, dude. Can he keep it up again, dude? Um, he's allowed nine hits, one earned, one home run, three walks, nine Ks. Nope. Nope, that's wrong. That's Lance McCullers. Ooh, that's a bad stroke. Hey, hit me for uh, stroke number one, please, because I got to go back to Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez, this postseason, has allowed 16 hits. He's allowed seven earned runs, two home runs, five walks, 13 Ks, over three starts. I don't know who's going to start game two. I imagine it would probably be Luis Garcia, um, but I don't know. After that, do you put Grinky out there if he's not hurt? Um, maybe a guy like Kendall Graveman. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Tell the tape for Atlanta's pitchers. Max Freed, 16 and two thirds innings pitched. He's got 3.78 ERA over three games. He has allowed 19 hits, seven earned runs, three home runs, two walks, and 17 Ks. Charlie Morton, 14 and one. Third inning, he's got a 3.77 ERA over three games. He's allowed 10 hits, six earned, two home runs, eight walks, 19 Ks. Those are the starting pitchers. That's where that's where the, these games are going to be won. On the starting on the bump, the fact that Atlanta has three true starters going, and Houston is going to have to piece something together, which is not anything that they haven't done this postseason because they've had to do it multiple times. That is going to be a large factor into this series. But this is something that I do want everyone to take into consideration. Defense. I did a lot of digging trying to find defensive stats for individual players this postseason where maybe they weren't performing so well at the plate. Maybe a guy like... um. Albies or Swanson or something like that. I wanted to find how they were performing individually out in the field. A guy like Jose Altuve, uh, Maldonado. Um, I wasn't able to find that. What I was able to find was a very interesting tidbit on the Atlanta Braves. In the 2021 regular season, the Atlanta Braves defense shifted 2,000 276 times. That is fifth most in Major League Baseball. They shifted a 38.9% uh, of the time in the field. Um, I want to skip over 2020 because it was so just such a strange season. Jump into 2019. In 2019, the Atlanta Braves shifted 924 times. That is 26th. In the majors at the time. They shifted 14.9% of the time. Again, 26 in the majors. In 2018, Atlanta shifted 765 times. That's good for 23rd in the in MLB. They uh that's 12.5% of the time. And then 2017, the Atlanta Braves shifted 693 times. That was good for 13th in the majors, and they shifted 11.2 percent of the time. Here's where these numbers are going to come into consideration. In 2017, the number of teams that shifted 1,000 times, can you guess it, at least 1,000 times in the regular season, that was only seven. In 2018, that number jumped up a bit. Number of teams to shift at least 1,000 times jumped up to 16. In 2019, did it decrease or did it go up? Little game we're playing, up or down? If you said up, you would be right. The number of teams in 2019 that shifted 1,000 or more times jumped up to 24 teams. 
in 2021, did it go up or down? Number of teams that shifted at least 1,000 times. Did it go up or down? Does anyone see a trend here? If you don't answer up, I don't know what what to tell you. If you said down, you're wrong. If you said up, you're correct. But how many teams? Every single team in the majors this year shifted a minimum of 1,000 times. Now, again, there are some bad things about the shift that I don't agree with. But it puts your team in the best position to win. And here's why I'm saying this to you right now. In 2017, Houston led the league in the amount of times their defense shifted. In 2018, Houston led the league in the amount of times their defense shifted. In 2019, Houston was second in the league for the amount of times their defense shifted. This regular season, 2021, Houston was third in the amount of times that their defense have shifted. Oh, Jacob, you know, the analytics. What are you, you're putting the guys where the balls get hit. Doesn't that just make sense? does make sense. Take some of the fun out of the game. But I'm trying to say that because I personally needed to see those numbers. I knew it had an effect on the game. But to see a team like Houston, who has been in the postseason since 2017, 2016, regularly, and killing it, um, see those numbers, defensive numbers, as far as total shifts in the season go, absolutely crazy. If you need more evidence that shifting your defense helps your team, I got another team to talk about. In 2021, the Los Angeles Dodgers were the team to shift the most in Major League Baseball. In 2019, the Los Angeles Dodgers were the number one team when it comes to shifting. In 2018, your Los Angeles Dodgers were 11th. I don't know what happened there. In 2017, the Dodgers were 16th. Oh, I do know what happened there. They started believing in the numbers. They played the numbers game. Even if it's for just that one ball, that one crucial moment in the bottom of the eighth where they line Corey Seager up directly where that ball is hit. That's what the shift is for. Do I agree with it all the time? No. Do I think some of those shifts out there are absolutely astoundingly stupid? Yes. But for some reason, they work, and that's why I'm not in a front office. But... With that being said, Atlanta has been behind the eight ball in that department of the game, the analytical department of the game, especially on the defensive side. And you are seeing it bear the fruits of their labors. Atlanta's infield has also played a majority of the season together. They have not really deviated from Freeman, Albies, Swanson, Riley around the corner right to left. They haven't deviated from that except in, you know, injury and just time off throughout the regular season. This infield core has been the structural mode, the foundation for this Atlanta Braves offense. And here's one thing I will say to you on that is that there hasn't been a team since June that has shifted more times than the Atlanta Braves. Keep an eye out for that this series. Watch how... Atlanta moves those guys around the diamond in order to combat a Houston Astros team that has been here, done that, and can hit the ball around the field. Oh my God, I'm ready for this series to start. That's a World Series stain. Let's get it.